Hey there. Today we're going to be talking about which foods trigger or make long COVID ME-CFS symptoms worse. And if you don't know me yet, I'm Lori. I'm the founder of the Relief and Transformation courses for long COVID and ME-CFS, as well as the Long COVID and ME-CFS Holistic Healing Summit. I know a lot of you have joined me in that summit in the past, and more and more of you are joining us in the courses and seeing what can happen for you, which is really exciting. So why do I personally know anything about all of this and how to recover? Because I myself actually had severe MECFS for, for eight years, and I fully recovered from that. And then I had long COVID, and I fully recovered from that within eight months using what I've been teaching for over 20 years. So I've been coaching people with MECFS for over 20 years and now with long COVID. So people had been getting good, you know, good results, but it took a while. So what I'm really excited about now is that uh, what happened about a, well, it's been about a year ago now. So this is uh you may be watching this several years later or something, but but I discovered this whole new approach that actually heals the underlying root cause of all of these chronic illnesses when it's followed properly. And I was able to heal myself of lifelong weather-dependent fibromyalgia that I'd been dealing with for a long time. Now, that's kind of confusing. I'll just, I'll try to sum it up for you. Ever since I could remember, I'd had days that I called Wonder Woman days because I could do anything. And I, you know, I just had unending energy throughout the day, physically, mentally, cognitively. My outlook was really great. All those kinds of things. And sometimes I could do it for the next day and the next day and the next day. And then other times I would have days where I couldn't get up off of the sofa. And I was in a lot of pain, you know, brain fog and things like that. So all these different things, but I didn't work out until maybe like 10 years ago while I was living in Los Angeles. Most of my days were Wonder Woman days. And I got, oh my gosh, it was so great. I got so strong and, um, you know, was just able to do so much and so happy most of the time. And then when I moved back to the East Coast, it was like, wah, wah, wah. And so it finally dawned on me that it had to do with the weather. So I could, you know, before I healed from this, I could literally be experiencing a symptom and say, okay, this is probably a trough that's over us right now, or there's a, a um, cold front coming towards us right now or whatever. And then look at the weather map and sure enough, that would be what was happening uh, and vice versa, you know, looking at the weather map and going, oh yeah, that's why I'm feeling like this. So this particular approach that we're going to be kind of touching on today a bit completely healed me of all of those weather dependent fibromyalgia symptoms. So my days now are 98% Wonder Woman days, which is absolutely amazing. The other thing, of course, that's happening is that I'm teaching this and coaching people on this approach in my online courses and things like that. So I'm so excited about that. I'll get back to that in just a bit. So anyway, over the past 20 plus years, I've, I've really had the absolute honor of coaching many hundreds of people in their recovery from all over the world, from MECFS. And, and yeah, and that's what I would find is that sometimes people would completely heal, but it took a while. And sometimes they, they wouldn't. But with this new approach that I've been doing, uh, it just makes my heart sore because not only was I able to, you know, 
heal myself, like I was just telling you about, but other people have been following these same, same approaches tailored specifically to them with long COVID, ME-CFS, F, you know, fibromyalgia, multiple sclerosis, um, lots of other chronic illnesses. And we're talking about they're seeing results and fully healing sometimes within a matter of months or like a year and a half max, uh, which is just blowing my mind and it's huge. So that's my story. That's the story of so many of these thrivers in our community. Um, the numbers are growing as, you know, as we go along and with their hard work and implementing what I'm sharing with you today, in addition to the other things that I teach in the Relief and Transformation course, and it's giving them their life back. So before we get started and jump into the specifics of today, I just want to say hi to all of you out there that are watching this live and, um, and to those of you who are watching it recorded as well, of course. Uh, to those of you who are, who are here live, please feel free to add any questions in the chat and in the comments and to give me a thumbs up during our time together if I ask a question and your answer is yes, or like let me know if you've experienced what I'm talking about. And if you want to be able to join us live, then please uh, make sure to join my email list because I do these these live workshops fairly frequently. So usually about once a month. And uh, yeah, and also if you're watching the recording of this and you have any questions, please do put them in the comments below and we'll make sure to get back to you, okay? So let's talk about food. Let's talk about, uh, I don't like the word diet, but we're going to we're going to use the word diet for right now. So there are tons of different diets out there. Different ways of eating. I like that term better. Ways of eating. So how many of you have tried different types of diets to try to address your illness? Give me a a thumbs up or a yes in the comments or yeah. So I'm seeing everybody everybody that, that is with us right now is saying yes. Um, and how many of you have tried more than, let's say, three different types of diets? Okay. Yep. Most of you as well. Yeah. So me too. You know, when I was growing up, this probably dates me a little bit, but when I was growing up, low fat diets were the thing. And knowing what I know now, that type of diet is absolutely horrible for you for a number of reasons, but one of which is that we really need plenty of healthy fats. And especially when we're recovering, when we're healing from these chronic illnesses and from these hidden illnesses that we're going to be talking about today, these, these hidden infections. I was also a vegetarian for many, many, many years. I was vegan for a couple of years. Uh, I tried the typical keto diet for my fibr fibromyalgia. I did autoimmune paleo. I did carnivore. I did all of these different, <laughs> different types, you know, ways of eating. So does this sound maybe familiar to a lot of you trying all these different ways of eating? Yeah, yes. And there are so many different ways of eating out there. So how do we know which kinds of foods are going to make us feel better and which ones are gonna be detrimental to us? Now, I know that this can be a tricky question, but my hope for you is that we're going to get, well, actually, my hope is, my knowing as well, is that we're going to get to a pretty simple answer by the end of this time together here. So let's start with this key, with this 
kind of discovery. I mean, I wasn't the first person to make it, but it's not very well known out there. And that's that you've got to understand what's causing your symptoms. You've got to know what that root cause is of your symptoms. And if you start with that, then you start to understand what kinds of foods make that underlying cause worse, what aggravate it, exacerbate it, what cause it to get even bigger, right? And which of the foods will make the cause of the symptoms, the inflammation, all of that stuff, less active and allow you to feel better. Now, here's a spoiler alert, and the basis of this new approach that I've been talking about, that I've been implementing in the Relief and Transformation course with people with long COVID and MECFS and Lyme and all those different things that is having so much success, and that is that all chronic illness is caused by hidden infections in the body. Now, when I say hidden infections, we're talking about bad microbes, okay, that have basically they've taken over like termites in a house. And you can see some of my other videos to learn more about that. Uh, there's, there's one specifically that's all about how to recover from long COVID and MECFS. So, uh, so you can check that out. I think we'll have a link to that down below. Now, the thing is that we're not just talking about candida though that can certainly be a big part of it, we're also talking about worms. We're talking about um, other types of fungus. We're talking about these, uh, sometimes certain types of viruses, but we'll get into that, that in a different video, actually. We're, we're talking about these microbes. So there are really thousands and thousands of those bad microbes that can get out of control in the body and cause these horrible illnesses. So, and here's where we get into the food portion of it, food and substances, right? There are certain foods or substances that feed those microbes and those are going to trigger symptoms for you. And you might not experience those symptoms while you're eating the food or, you know, drinking the substance or whatever, maybe not even the day of, but afterwards, those microbes are kind of growing in strength, you know, so they're multiplying and getting bigger because you've just fed them. And they're also releasing more toxins because they're proliferating. So you do end up feeling worse. Uh, and again, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to share a secret with you. This is not just for long COVID and MECFS and fibromyalgia. Again, this is at the root of a whole host of illnesses and chronic conditions in the body. You know, I mentioned already Lyme, MS, um, asthma, allergies, other autoimmune conditions, just a whole swath of really any chronic condition. And these foods and substances will trigger symptoms because again, why will you tell me? Put it, in, put it in the chat. Yes, we're feeding the bad microbes with them. So going back to, you know, all of this confusion around which type of eating plan to use, and what foods are gonna be most helpful to decrease the symptoms and what not to eat, right? And what not to drink, then this is, this is where it becomes more clear, right? And the number one reason that we can get more clear about this eating plan, plan is that with the infection part, what we're really finding is that parasites actually are probably the biggest type of infection, the biggest part of the infections. 
Again, that's really key because now that you know what you're dealing with, lots of parasites, fungus, maybe some bacteria, then you can go, okay, so what makes them more active in my body? What feeds them? What makes them grow more? What makes them stronger in my body and harder for me to fight? And what can I eat that's highly nutritious for me and at the same time doesn't feed them as much? So now that you understand the cause, what you're going, what we're going to talk about today is going to make a lot more sense. And you're going to know a lot more easily, right? So I promised you that it was going to get easier. And this is where it gets easier. You're going to know a lot more easily which foods are going to make your symptoms worse and further that infection, those infections, and which foods are going to help to build your body up so that you can eventually treat those infections, which is what we do in the Relief and Transformation course. So we always start out with this eating plan in the Relief and Transformation course, and then we move to specific treatments. So here's the thing about, carb- about, <laughs> about parasites. They thrive on carbs. So some of you have heard this story before, but I just remember that when I was so sick. And before that, I had horrible, horrible cravings, specifically for for sugar, for carbs, for bread, you know, really, really any kind of carb. But this got to the point where when I was so super sick with severe ME-CFS, to the point a lot of times of not being able to get up and down the stairs, not being able to get out of the bed, sometimes my father had to feed me, But on those days when sometimes I was able to just drag myself around the house. So my my father had actually hidden all the sweets. He was taking care of me at the time. He had hidden all the sweets in the house because I was having such a bad time with them. And I would drag myself around the house and find them and eat them all. Like, Like if I found a whole package of chocolate turtles I would eat the whole thing. Now, this might sound like a fun kind of hide and seek game, but <laughs> you know, if if it had been under different circumstances, it would. But oh my gosh, so not fun because I would end up so much sicker and have horrible symptoms even, you know, even worse than I was already experiencing and just be completely laid out and even more miserable for the next several days or sometimes even the next several weeks. I had no idea at the time that I was literally feeding the things that were making me sick and that I was making my illness even worse. So, you know, the thing is that those cravings can be so strong And the reason is that those little critters are screaming at you for food. (laughs) So that we, we went a little bit gremlins on you there. If you ever watched that movie gremlins, but it's kind of like what they are, you know, if you feed them after midnight, then they become monsters. (laughs) Um, So, but the thing is that I want to ease you a little bit there. It's that as you're able to start to cut out those sugar, sugars, the carbs, the the bread, all those, the alcohol, all those things, those cravings get way less until you don't have them anymore at all. And we'll be talking about that a little bit more in a, in a bit here as well. Okay, so we've already started to just touch on some of the foods and substances that make symptoms worse and that make the inflammation worse in our body. But let's go over the main, like the top three or four here. Number one is sugars. And that is the absolute worst thing that you can eat because it's directly feeding those uh, those parasites, those bad microbes. So that can be fruit juice, it can be soda, it can be you know, anything with added sugar, any processed sugars, but, but also this can get tricky 
because there are also foods and substances that are healthy that have sugar, right? So for example, let's say you have some, you know, you buy some organic honey from your neighbor down the street or they give it to you. But the thing is that the infections don't care where the sugar comes from. It's still sugar. It still feeds them, right? So uh, for example, avocado is great. It's super healthy for you, right? But it's a fairly carb heavy vegetable or fruit. I can't remember. I think it's considered to be a fruit, right? But um, so you have to be careful with it, right? So I actually don't recommend in, in the initial recovery phase of the relief and transformation eating plan, I actually don't re recommend eating any fruit for that initial phase because it's just too easy to overdo it. You can start adding it in, but but just, just so that you understand, sugar is sugar. You know, if it's even if it's like the super healthy maple syrup, whatever, it's still sugar. Okay. So, um, yeah, and, and again, we'll go into into the the next several several phases a little bit more of the the eating plan but basically you know once you get past that first phase and you're not experiencing symptoms anymore you do start to be able to add small amounts of lower sugar fruits back in and then eventually you know those things like honey and things like that but that's well after you have not been experiencing any symptoms okay now the you know and the thing is it's not that the honey is bad it's not that the maple syrup is bad. It's not that the fruits are bad. Inherently, if your body were in balance, if you weren't, you know, if you didn't have too many of the bad microbes, then it would be fine. It would be totally fine. But um, yeah, while you are dealing with this dysbiosis, then that sugar is feeding those bad microbes and that's sugar in all of its glorious forms. So that's number one. Number two is grains. And we're talking about not only grains that include gluten, but all grains, even complex grains, even unprocessed grains, even things like corn and rice, because anybody want to venture a guess? put it for me in the comments in the chat. Yes, exactly. Carbs, when they break down into your body, they break down into sugar. Yes. Thank you, Christine. You got it. And so you're feeding again, these, these bad microbes. There are some other issues with grains that we'll kind of touch on a little bit, but the main thing here is that you're feeding those parasites. And, and I also really want to make sure that you understand that these infections aren't just in the gut. They're not just in your GI tract. They can be anywhere in the body. And typically, if typically they are, if you have a chronic illness, typically they are in lots of other places in the body. So we're talking about the organs, like the liver, the lungs, in the blood, in the joints, in the eyes. So and of course, the thing about our amazing bodies is that the, you know, as we're breaking down these foods, our, our blood and, and our whole body system is taking the nutrients and taking the glucose, taking the energy that our body has broken down to all these different parts of our body, right? But the thing is, when those parasites live in those different parts of the body, then they're getting fed as well. And this is also the reason that we end up seeing a lot of nutritional deficiencies in people with these chronic illnesses, even when they are, you know, taking all the right supplements and, and eating very highly nutritious foods, you know? So, because the, the parasites are getting those, uh, those nutrients. Right. Okay. So, 
I want to talk about keto a little bit. The, the eating plan that we use in the relief and transformation course is, well, the, and the relief and transformation eating plan, it's a version of a keto diet in that you're actually changing your body to the state where it burns more fat versus sugars and carb, carbohydrates for, for energy. And, and that fat burning process and turning the body into a fat burner is really key to this steady, sustained energy. So when, when the body's using sugar and carbs to create energy, the, the energy ends up, we end up with these spikes, right? Spikes in energy, spikes in blood sugar, these short spikes of energy, and then it crashes, you know, and not to mention it's causing blood sugar problems long-term and, you know, all these different things. So for the body to be a fat burner, it's much more efficient and the, the body is more able to create that sustained energy, right? I have a student right now who is fully bedridden and he's actually having to, his, his mother is taking the course, um, just wonderful people, absolutely wonderful people. And he started to change very slowly because he's very sensitive and we'll talk a little bit more about that later too, but he's, he started to change so that he is getting on this eating plan and they're finding that he is needing less food because he was having to spend a ton of his energy and time just on eating throughout the day. And it was because of this, you know, because his body was, was a sugar and carb burner which is a sugar burner for, for energy. And now as he's moving more into that fat burning body operation, you know, he's not having to eat as much as often, which is great because now that energy can be used for his body to heal more. Okay. So we're still talking about grains. The second thing about the grains is the gluten that's in a lot of them. And there are other problematic proteins that are in some, you know, some of the grains, but let's talk about the gluten specifically. Interesting thing about gluten is that it's very, very similar to a protein that candida uses to bind to the lining of our intestines and keep it there. <laughs> so if we have a lot of fungal overgrowth, which you know, we've been talking about, it's been linked to countless chronic illnesses. You can Google it and you'll find tons of research on it. If, if we already have that, then our body can mistakenly see the gluten protein as the enemy, right? As, as that candida protein, which is going to increase the inflammation, which is going to activate the immune system, you know, all these things. And there are a lot of other reasons that gluten is problematic. And you can probably Google that as well and come up with tons of different research, you know, research studies on that. Uh, and again, when we're talking about grains, we're talking about all of the grains. And this makes it easier when you think about it, right? We're, we're talking no quinoa, no rice, no corn. And we're also talking no seeds or nuts. And this is one of the places where, where the relief and transformation eating plan is different from most of the keto diets out there. The reason that we say no seeds and nuts is a couple of different reasons. Um, the, the first one is that nuts especially, but also seeds usually, well, they all contain anti-nutrients that can be very problematic to the body. So, you know, especially when you're already, when you already have these, these um, hidden infections and maybe you already have leaky gut, maybe you already have all these other sensitivities and things like that, then these anti-nutrients in the nuts and the seeds are going to 
make it even harder on your body. So we really want to give your body the most advantage possible to get to the place where you can start treating these bad microbes. Uh, so we stay away from, from those nuts and, and seeds. And the other reason for it is because what I find is that it's very easy for people to go overboard with the nuts and the seeds, and that's going to up your carb load for the day, and it's going to also, again, up those, those anti-nutrients. So we just stay away from them in the first phase of the relief and transformation eating plan. Now, you know, I know you're probably looking at this and going, well, what the heck? can I eat? Like, this sounds so limiting. And I totally understand that. I totally get it. Um, but I'm just going to say, you know, to recover from these chronic illnesses and to get your life back, it, it takes discipline. It really does. And it takes pouring your heart into it. You know, we talk about what is your big why? What's your big why? Is it your family? Is it, is it, you know, going on a, on a traveling adventure somewhere? Is it being able to go hike in the mountains on a regular basis? Is it being able to ride horses again? Whatever it is for you, identify that big why for yourself. Okay, because the thing is that this is all worth it. It's so worth it. And we just we've had miraculous results. We're having miraculous results. I myself witnessed a, a miraculous result for myself. And we're talking about life changing successes from people who have been ill for decades or for their whole life or for just a year or two. But the thing always is that when they look back at their whole life, they can see, we do this in the course, they can see how their body has been in dysbiosis for a long time and how it's gotten worse and worse, right? Okay. So number one is to get the sugars out. Number two is the grains got to go. Number three is to switch from starchy veg. Okay, so, and we know that a lot of the starchy veg is nutritious, right? Sweet potatoes. Oh my gosh, who doesn't love sweet potatoes? Sweet potato fries. I'm getting hungry thinking about that. Okay, so let's take a step back though. So the reason that we eliminate starchy veg and replace it with leafier veg is yes, yes, Brad, you totally got it. Because the starchy veg feeds the bad microbes starchy veg turns into sugar. So again, we're talking about sweet potatoes, we're talking about regular potatoes, yams, some of the sweeter squashes, et cetera, et cetera. All right, the, the second to the last main big category, and this is another place in which the relief and transformation eating plan differs in a big way from other keto diets that are out there, it's dairy. You got to take out all that dairy, except for grass-fed butter or ghee, if you tolerate that. Not everybody tolerates butter, but if you tolerate it, it's great. It's totally fine. The, the reason for that is, well, let me ask again. Let me, let me see. Um, yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. Dairy contains lactose, which is a sugar. Great, great job, Susan. Yes. Awesome. And butter does not have that, right? The other thing is that the protein in those, uh, most of that dairy, except for the butter, is very similar to the protein in gluten. And so studies have found that those types of proteins contribute to inflammation, like we were talking about earlier. So, Again, just remember that we're giving the body the biggest advantage that we possibly can 
to be able to fight off these parasites, these funguses, is, is these fungi, and these bacteria, and all these bad microbes. So, um, you know, again, butter and ghee are tolerated well by most people, but not by everyone. And that's definitely something for you to consider as you're changing your way of eating and, and as you're focusing more on, on these things that you can eat, you know, that don't exacerbate your symptoms and feed the, the infections. It, it's, you need to consider what you know that your body does well with. So for example, some people are sensitive or allergic to eggs at this point. And that's super unfortunate because eggs are really healthy. And that's one of the kind of go-tos that a lot of people have for this. But if you are allergic to eggs or sensitive to eggs at this point in your recovery process, then you know that you just need to stay away from them because it doesn't make any sense to, you know, to make that burden worse on your body. So you find other alternatives that do work for you. What I do find is that every single person who's been able to follow this eating plan and then to go through and fully treat the hidden infections with the relief and transformation course has found that their food sensitivities have gone. Um, so just as an example, there was a client I had who was following a carnivore diet because she couldn't tolerate veg really at all, not even lettuce. And uh, after a few months of treating, she was able to start to tolerate veg and now has no problem with it. So she eats plenty of leafy greens and, and other low carb veg now. Um, right. So she does stick to the eating plan really well because she she still hasn't gotten quite gotten to the place where she's gotten rid of all of her symptoms, though she has gotten through most of them. And she had, you know, several decades of MECFS. So as you do start to implement this way of eating, the, the relief and transformation eating plan, you start to notice that, oh my gosh, I'm starting to feel better. I have more energy. I'm not crashing as hard or as often. And in fact, just before you know, I met with you here. Uh, I got an email from a student who said that she's been able to walk for one and a half miles for an hour without crashing or getting tired. Whereas before she could barely walk for 20 minutes and she'd still get really tired. And that's just from doing this eating plan. And that's only been after a couple of weeks. She hasn't even started treating yet. She, uh, you know, she, she also said that she wants to get rid of her tinnitus and to be able to dance again. And I want that for her too. And I'm so excited to see that happen for her as she, you know, starts treating and goes through the program. And I love getting wins from students and from you and sharing them because that's, you know, that's what let, lets us know what's ahead for us. And it lets us know what's possible for us and it reinforces, you know, if it's your win and you share it with me or share it with the group or whatever, then it's reinforcing those wins for yourself as well. You know, when, when students share with me that they've made progress, even the teeniest little bit of progress, I just absolutely do a happy dance because I know that the little bit of progress is going to add up and start to snowball and that not too long from now, they're going to share that they are symptom free and that they're running marathons and playing with their kids and traveling and all those things that they've been wanting to do. And I know that because that's, those are the kinds of emails that I get. Those are the kinds of posts that we have, you know, within the relief and transformation community and, and with clients and all those, all those, amazing, amazing people. When they go with this approach and when they stick with it and go through all the different stages. So that's really important. If you experience a win, when you experience a win from using this eating plan, please make sure to send it to me. You know, 
email it to me, post it in YouTube in the comments, post it in Instagram, all those things. Uh, Because, you know, my ultimate mission is to, is to let you know that there is hope and that there are answers and that there are ways to get well. That is so important. So important. Okay, so there have been a couple of questions that have been coming into the chat. I just want to address those real quickly here. So what about red meat? Isn't it supposed to be bad for you? No, (laughs) red meat is actually a wonderful source of nutrition. The saturated fats in grass-fed red meats um, are really super healthy and you know, of course, we want to stay away from anything with with glycophosphate in it. Any animals that have been fed any feed with that, and it's hard to do that because it was so widespread for you know for a while. But yeah, red meat is is super nutrient dense. Um, if you want to go even more nutrient dense, then you start introducing things like liver and things like that. But you don't have to, you know, you don't have to do that if that's not palatable to you, or you can take it in, in pill form as well. You can actually get, you know, um, beef liver supplements and things like that. If I eat more fat, when I get fatter, uh, yeah, she says I've gained so much weight since I got long COVID. So no, this is a super common misconception it's actually the sugars and the carbs that cause problems and weight gain. The good fats, and these are, we're definitely talking about these good fats, and these are things like grass fed butter and ghee, grass fed beef tallow, organic and properly processed olive oil, avocado oil, coconut oil. Um, these are all highly healthy fats that our bodies need and, and that actually feed our body, our brain thrives on fat um because it's mostly fat itself actually so in order to you know replenish and to to regenerate and all those things our brain needs fat our whole body needs fat our immune system really does really well with with uh especially with you know the grass-fed beef tallow yeah All right, next question. I've already lost so much weight over the past several years with ME. I'm afraid if I cut out the carbs, I'd melt away to nothing. Yes. So kind of the opposite deal here. And I totally get that. I I, uh, had that kind of issue in the beginning. So adding more of these fats into your diet, like that we were just talking about, is an excellent way to get more calories in. I'm going to write a little note for myself here, actually, to do a video for y'all about um, a superb mayonnaise recipe that I have. Uh, okay, so that is done. Yep. So, so that's a way to do that. And then you can also increase the number of meals that you eat each day. You just want to make sure that you keep your your protein in each meal to about three to four ounces for women and about five to six ounces for men, because otherwise that protein does actually end up feeding the bad microbes because it, it does eventually turn into glucose. It takes longer. But if you're eating a really big portion, you know, over four ounces for women and over six ounces for men in one sitting, then that extra does end up feeding them. So yeah, so go for the high fat first and then, and then start adding in more meals if you need to. Ah, what about coffee and teas? Ah, yes. Okay. I forgot to talk about coffee. That was the last big category there and it's caffeine. And I know that a lot of you are not going to like this at all. You're probably going to cuss at me a little bit and that's okay. I don't mind. Any for any any form of caffeine is a big no-no. Uh, even decaf coffee and teas are still a no-no because they still contain caffeine. Now, there are lots of different reasons for this. One of the first ones is that coffee itself 
contains something like over a hundred different compounds that are problematic to the human body. I, I don't remember the exact number right now, but uh, then the other reason is that when you think about the effects that caffeine have on your body, right, gets you all keyed up and, and it is problematic for the nervous system and all those other things. When you feed a parasite <laughs> caffeine, what happens to it? It gets all keyed up too. So we don't we don't want super active parasites in the body, super active microbes in the body. We want them to chill out and get the heck out, right? So um, as far as herbal teas, some people do fine with herbal teas. Some people you'll for some people you'll want to stay away from the herbal teas because a lot of times they they well they usually have mold in the in the leaves in the tea bag and that mold reacts with the fungus and with other you know bad microbes in the body so just just be aware of that and and then also with a lot of the herbal teas you want to make sure that you're staying away from any sort of sort of sweetener in it and again we're talking about these things that are healthy for us but these things like chicory licorice even stevia right so even even though stevia doesn't have any glucose uh it still keeps your your brain and your mindset and your thought patterns in the area of I need something sweet in order for, you know, to get my fix or, or whatever. And we really want to switch that. And what's going to happen eventually is that you'll get to the place where you, I don't, I can't stand sweet stuff now. I, you know, if I happen to take every once in a while, I'll take a bite of cake or something like that, because I, you know, because I don't have symptoms anymore and, and that's fine. And, uh, and it, just doesn't taste good to me. So yeah. Um, now, another thing that I want to make sure that I tell you about, and I don't want you to freak out here, but most of my students who start following this diet, this, this eating plan, who weren't eating this way before, so who were eating for some of them, even a fairly small amount of carbs for, you know, in the typical American diet, but um, they all start passing worms. <laughs> I have pictures I can show you that they've sent me. I have pictures of my own worms that, uh, that I passed not from because I'd been following this this same type of eating plan for a while, but um, so from some other things. So it's freaky, but I want you to know that this is a good thing, right? You're getting rid of them. This is the first part of the process, and you're you're getting rid of those bigger suckers, so that the overall toxic load on your body and stress on your body is less. And this is how we start out, you know, with the eating plan, with the relief and transformation course, so that once you do start treating, it's, it's easier on you. And you're also just going to find that you start to feel better once you've passed those worms. It's not going to take care of the whole picture because, again, we have these microbes in all areas of the body, not just in the lower intestines and, and not just in the, in the GI tract, but, um, yeah. And let me know if you want to see those pictures, I'm happy to share them with you. And I know that it really freaks some people out. And for some people, it's really fascinating to me. It's really fascinating, but I understand, I totally understand the freak out factor too. But the, one of the things that, that I found and that some of my other students find is that it's very, it's satisfying when you see them because you, you go, oh my God, well, yeah, I've been feeling horrible. This makes sense. These little suckers in here have been making me miserable. And if these are coming out after only cutting out sugars and going low carb, it's like the light bulb goes off.
you know, okay, this whole illness makes sense to me now, whereas it's been such a big mystery before that. And then, you know, the other thing is after going to, I don't know about you, but, you know, let me know in the chat and, and give me a thumbs up and stuff. But for me, during the, the illness, the first time I went to doctor after doctor after doctor and had test after test after test and everything came back normal. And they were like, we don't know what's wrong with you because we can't see anything. We don't see that any, anything's wrong with you. All the tests are normal. And so when you, then when you start to see the, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, everybody's saying yes. Yeah, so then when you can actually see these little critters coming out of you, it's a relief. It's it's a huge, it's like vindication, you know, it's proof. Um, and you have actual evidence for yourself. Now, along those lines, just a quick heads up that usually even if you take in a stool sample where you can visually see worms, a lot of times when that is tested, um, they'll, the, the test will come back negative. And there's a whole reason for that that I'm not gonna get into right now, but, um, and, and if you take it to your doctor, your doctor is very rarely going to know how to approach this. If you do have, you know, look for a doctor who knows how to approach this though. Um, but you want to make sure that you do it in a certain order so that it, so that it actually works. So, um, right. So, so students do feel or find that they start feeling much, much better once they're fully on this eating plan. Now there's another caveat here. I do have to say that for some people who are in severe dysbiosis or who have been and or who have been eating carbs and sugars for a long time or, you know, drinking alcohol on a regular basis, things like that, then you might start off by feeling a lot worse. And that's because of die off, right? There's a there's a certain amount of of shift that needs to happen in the body for it to go from sugar to to fat burning which can can cause some discomfort as well but most of the time when people have a tough time moving to this eating plan it's because of die off like i've had students who are having like like pus coming out of their ears and um you know their fatigue gets much worse their brain fog gets much worse they're just miserable and this is called a herxheimer reaction also called a healing response a healing crisis and for most people it subsides after 10 to 14 days but you know what if it lasts longer than that or if you are absolutely so miserable then add back in some carb, you know, do some, some healthy carb, like add in some blueberries or something, and then back it off again a lot more slowly. Because what, what happens with that Herxheimer reaction is that the, the bad microbes are dying and when they die, they release toxins. So if you're killing off a whole bunch of bad microbes all at once, then your body is going to be overloaded with those toxins and the different microbes create different types of toxins. So some of them are brain toxins. Some of them are, you know, all, all these different types of toxins. So you ex end up experiencing different types of symptoms. Um, then once you get back to being on that eating plan for, you know, a couple of weeks, you are going to notice that you start to feel better. And, and that's the key. And that's why this works so well. You know, this is not just a theory. This is something that we see over and over and over again with students. Because it really is, you know, taking a look at what the cause is. And hey, how do I stop feeding the cause? How do I stop feeding these infections? Okay, so let's go um, into, yeah, you're, you're gonna wanna stay away from any sort of processed food, really. So even things like, like bacon, you gotta read the 
the um, the food ingredients or whatever the the nutrition information, because most bacon has preservatives and additives in it. Most bacon has sugar added to it as well. Now there are bacon, you know, there's packaged bacon out there that does not have added sugar and does not have these additives and preservatives in it. So that's what you want to keep an eye out for. But really the way to make it the easiest is to just go with meat, fish, low carb veg, and healthy fats. You know, um, because so the thing is, I'll give you an example. Up until a few years ago, I thought that if a label said natural flavors, that it was actual natural flavors, you know, that they were extracting some flavors from whatever, from different fruits or whatever. And if and as long specifically, I was looking at um, sparkling water with natural flavors in it, you know, cause I thought, oh, well, just a teeny tiny little bit of, you know, that natural flavor should be fine. But I, I, as I started to do more research on it, I can't remember what led me down this rabbit hole, but I found out that natural flavor flavors on a food label still means that it's made in a lab. <laughs> And what I was finding with my, I think that's why I started looking into it more is because what I was finding with my students is that some people were still having some issues and we couldn't work out where it was coming from. And sure enough, it was that it was things like the sparkling water and things like that. Um, let's talk about alcohol. It, you know, we touched on that already. It's a, it's a, just a, such a big problem in so many different respects for this, you know, for this point in your recovery, it's, it's a, and really just overall, honestly, it's a carcinogen, your, uh, it's a toxin, like it's literally a toxin, your liver has to break it down, all of it. And so, and your liver is already overloaded with so many toxins from all of these bad microbes so that just adds on even more to it. And then it adds on even more because most alcohols, things like wine and beer are also overloaded with yeast. And so this adds, because that's a part of the, you know, the process to create the wine and the beer. And that adds to the overall candida and fungal load that's already overwhelming the body and the immune system and then ends up increasing the toxins even more as well. So again, I know that it feels hard to give all of this stuff up and I'm saying give all this stuff up in quotes, the alcohol, the coffee, the things that you used to consider to be treats. And I'll tell you for me, what I kept going back to as I was first going through this process was you know what? I want to live my life. You know, at that point I was watching all of my, my classmates from college go off and be like, turn into huge movie stars and rock stars and all that stuff. And I was like, I, oh my gosh, I, I will do whatever it takes. I'll just do whatever it takes. Um, because I wanted to get out there and to contribute to the world and to be able to express myself and to be out in the world again and, and to play and all of those things. Um, uh, yeah, so uh, Mary is saying that she, yeah, so, so Mary has done this eating plan and we've, yeah, we've worked together. And she says that she, that it was tough for her when she first started it out as well, but that it was so worth it. Um, so thank you for that input, Mary. Really appreciate that. Um, and Mary, how are you doing now? Will you just pop that into the chat? Yep, three months in, a lot of changes have happened much more energy, less brain fog, things are easier to do. Um, 
Do you mind if I share a little bit more about your story? Okay, cool. Yeah. So, so Mary actually was diagnosed with MS multiple sclerosis and she was in a wheelchair for, for many years before we started working together. And she is now, right. You're able to walk with a cane now, right? Yes, 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 yes. So, um, amazing, amazing. Thank you for for that share, Mary. Really appreciate that. And and let's go into a few more shares. I I also recently got a message from a student saying that she's gotten over the Herxheimer die off hump of the eating plan, and she was one of the ones actually who was having like you know stuff coming out of her ears. She couldn't hear really for a while. And this is a typical candida thing that, you know, that those particular symptoms. Um, and she's starting to feel better and better than she has in years. She's still, she hasn't started treatment quite yet. She's waiting for a couple of things to come in. But again, this just shows you the power and the importance of this eating plan. And it is a necessity to get it in place first. And um, yeah, yeah, we we talked already about how one of the students was able to not have to eat so much and so often during the day. And uh, yeah, so so his regular flow of energy is becoming more, and he's going to start to notice that he feels better with that as well. And he was also recently able to visit with a friend for five. Now, this is a, you know, someone who is completely bed bound, but he was able to visit with a friend for five minutes recently without crashing afterwards, whereas before he would have crashed hard for, you know, for several days there. So these are just a few of the health thrivers that are currently in the relief and transformation course or, or whom I worked with before that. And, um, you know, I, I always like to share those stories, those win, wins with you, and I'll do that in other videos. And in the meantime, I just wanna thank you so much for being here with me. Uh, you know, it, it means the world to me because I know I know somewhat of where you are right now. And I know how scary and frustrating and just heartbreaking it is. And because I know that it doesn't have to be that way. Um, and I know that it that it is a a, it has to be a committed journey to shift it, but it's so possible. And, and on the other side of it, it's even better for most people, for pretty much everybody who's fully recovered. It's, it's even better than before they got so ill. So please tell your friends, please share with, you know, anyone else that you know, who has a chronic illness of any kind whether it be long COVID or MECFS or, or Lyme or MS or, or arthritis or any of these. Ah, uh, yes, thank you. Um, Sylvie, Mary, Brett. Yeah, yes. Okay, so all of you are going to be sharing on your Instagram and your Facebook and Perfect. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, because we, we really need to spread the word about this. Um, you know, if, if you're interested in finding out when we open up registration for the next Re Relief and Transformation course, or um, if we're not in that place quite, you know, right now, we, we do that three or four times a year, then just make sure to get on my email list to find out times about the future live workshops there's also a quiz that I have that you can take to find out if this, you know, this dysbiosis, these hidden infections are what, if, if you have indications that those are what are at the root of your chronic illness, there's a quiz. And um, 
And then there's also that that main video that where we go into a little bit more detail about the bad microbes and these hidden infections as well that you can that you can see. Um, and you know, you just you just have to treat these hidden infections, which, like I said, it is a, quite a process, but you can do it. I've done it. I've guided others to do it. And, and this is where you start with this eating plan. And maybe you're one of those people who has tried absolutely everything. I know I was when I was so sick. I actually took a supplement that was uh, like dried earthworms because it was supposed to help out the immune system or something. It didn't, it didn't. But, but I know what you're experiencing. And, and the thing is that if you're trying to rebuild a house that has termites, or in this case, these bad microbes, you're not going to get anywhere until you get rid of those termites first, right? If you start adding in pieces of wood, new pieces of wood, when the termites are still there, it's, it's not going to do anything because the termites are going to spread to those new pieces of wood. So I want to help you to get to the place where you're living your full glorious life. And you can tell me about all of that because, because I know that you can. So lots of love to you. Thank you so much for joining me. Please do post questions in the comments and um, post your wins. Let me know about your wins and even the small progress that you're making.